Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at some of the different forms you can build in Oracle Application Express and how easy it is for you to use the wizards that come part of Oracle Application Express to create these forms relatively quickly. When you create forms or any type of object using the wizards inside of uh, Apex you're not limited to what the um, wizard generates for you. You can certainly go back and enhance uh, what the wizard has done for you, but it'll do a lot of the gory details underneath the scenes. Things like, uh, you know, making sure your transactions are consistent. If you build a uh, master detail form, it'll handle all of the different uh, information between uh, the different tables or the different views or different objects inside your Oracle database automatically. And we're going to take a look at some of those. I'm going to build some forms and uh, I'm going to take a look at SQL Developer here. I'm going to build a couple of forms based on the EMP table. You can see I have this sandbox schema and I'm going to build a couple of forms off the EMP table and you can see those are the the different uh, columns that are in this particular table. A couple of important things are to make sure that uh, the tables that you're going to build forms off of have primary keys defined so if you go into constraints you can see I have this uh, primary key defined for this table and it's built on uh, EMP no and for my department table when we build a uh, master detail form we gotta make sure that we also have a primary key and we do have one there on depth no and we also want to make sure we have some sequences to populate those primary keys so I got this department sequence and employee sequence and we're gonna make use of those guys uh, to populate the primary keys in our tables inside of our apex forms so once we have all that defined let's hop over into uh, application express and I've already logged into Apex and I'm going to go into Application Builder, build a new application. I'm going to create a brand new one from scratch. It's going to be built off my database. It's going to do it from scratch. And I'm going to call this something like Form Demo. I have enough room here, so I'm going to have to do a little scrolling. I can start off by creating. Um, pages that already have objects on them. So I can create a page that's already got a report, a form, report, and form on them. But if I choose this, uh, I'm kind of limited in my options. Like I said, I can always go back and change things around, but I don't want the wizard to do everything for me. So for now, I'm just going to create um, uh, an application with a single blank page on it. So I have blank selected. I click on Add Page. So now I have an application with one blank page on it. So I have to have at least one page as part of my application before I can continue. Like I said, I could have chosen form, but for this example, I'm just going to start off with a blank page. Do I want to use tabs? Sure, I'll have one level of tabs. may not make use of those tabs, but if I select yes there, at least the uh, structure is put in there for me so I can add tabs later on. Do I want to copy shared components so I can create things like lists of values or web services references? I can uh, define those and then copy them between applications. This is going to be a real simple one, so I'm not going to copy anything over. I'll just click next. I'm not going to have an authentication scheme. I can either use application express authentication scheme, database account, change different things around like my default language, uh, date format, time format. Again, this is a real simple one, so I'm just going to select all of the basic ones for now. What theme do I want to use? Just a color and font scheme. That one looks kind of nice. I think I'll use theme 6. I don't think I've ever used that one before. So it gives me all this information. I click on create. I'm taken to my application 101 form demo. I could run the application, but there's nothing there. So if I click on run, there's the formatting of the uh, template that I used. If I want to go back, because I'm logged in as a developer, I have all of these things available to me at the bottom. I can go back to the application level. I can go back to the page level. So let's go back to uh, page one, which is a blank page. doesn't have anything on it. So if I want to put a form on the page, what do I do? Well, I go to my region section here, and I say I want to add a new region. So I click on Create, and now I have the ability to go in and say, okay, well, what do I want on that region? Uh, just plain old HTML, multiple HTML, a report, a form, different plugins. We're going to have different videos on all of these different pieces, but for now we're going to focus on forms. So when I click on Form, I'm then presented with a whole bunch of these other options that say, okay, well, what type of form do I want to put on? And uh, we have nine basic options here. Uh, you'll see later on that you can customize each one of these uh, in a myriad of ways. But this is going to provide you with a template of what your first page with the form is going to look like. 
So the first option I have there is a form based on a table or view. So if I want to display a form that's going to give users the ability to insert or update a single row in a database table, uh, that's the one I would use. If I want to have multiple rows on the form at the same time, I would choose tabular form. This will give me the ability to almost look like a report where I'll have a whole bunch of uh, records that I pull back uh, information and, and I'll have the ability to modify them, but I'll have more than one record on the field at any particular time. A form based on a procedure. This builds a form based on a stored procedure inside your database, a stored procedure that's going to take some kind of arguments, parameters. Uh, if you've implemented logic or DML inside of a stored procedure or a package inside your database, you can use a form based on a procedure uh, to create um, uh, an input form or a query form for your end users. A form on a table with a report. What this is going to do is it's actually going to create two pages. One page is going to be for the report, and each row is going to provide a link to a second page, which is give the users the ability to go in there and update the row. So you'll have a report, you'll have a little uh, option, uh, an icon on the left-hand side to say, okay, I want to edit this row. I can then click on it. I'll be taken to a second page, which is a form where I can input and update information. Also, I have the ability to go in there and add new records if I want. Form based on a SQL query, exactly what it sounds like. Creates a form based on columns that are returned by a SQL query, such as a, an equi join. It's a real common way of doing something like that. Form based on, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, display only existing items. That's also referred to as a summary page, and it creates a, ref uh, a read only version of a form. So, a lot of times uh, when you're inputting information, you'll have a confirmation page kind of at the end of a wizard. This is a real easy way of doing that, where you can uh, have uh, a confirmation page that lists everything that a user has selected up to that point and say, okay, is this exactly what you want to do? Uh, Oracle provides a lot of these with like database creation or you know network creation, where you go through and you specify all the different things that you want in the database. And then at the very end, there's kind of a summary page that says, okay, I'm about to create a database. Here's the name. Here's all the options. Are you sure you want to proceed? You click yes. Uh, creating a, uh, a form display only on existing items is a real easy way of doing that. Master detail, real cool way of having a master detail. We're going to walk through an example of that coming up. And forms based on web service or forms and report based on a web service, exactly what it sounds like. Web services are little pieces of code that are exposed through application servers, and you can call those web services to get information. So it's a real nice way of breaking a really large um, uh, application like an enterprise resource application to have all of these little separate components on it that you can then assemble back into what's called a composite application. Application Express really can't do that, but you can certainly call these individual pieces, these web services, to query information. So it's a real powerful way of extending, extending the capabilities of your applications without having to write a whole bunch more code. So let's start with uh, tabular form. I click on tabular form, it'll say, okay, well, what table do I want to base this on? I want to base this on, on my employee table. And Oracle is smart enough to say, okay, well, here's all the columns. I assume you want to see all the columns. Well, you know what? Employee numbers are primary, uh, is a primary key. It's going to be populated via a, um, a, a sequence. So I don't necessarily want to see that guy. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to take him off. And what operations are available to me? You want to update your rows. You want to update insert, update insert, delete. I'll say, you know, we'll do everything. Let's do update, insert, and delete. So we go to next. And Oracle is going to say, this is this is why I said we had to have a primary key earlier. Oracle has to uniquely identify the rows inside your database. So we do have a primary key for this guy, and it was based on the employee number. So I'm going to select primary key that's based on employee number. And it's going to say, okay, well, if you're going to insert new records, how are you going to do it? Do you have a trigger? Do you have some custom PL SQL function? I'm going to use a sequence. I have this employee sequence that I defined already. And Oracle will, uh, Oracle Application Express will say, okay, anytime you insert a new row, I'll just grab it from the sequence to make sure I have a unique number. Sounds good to me. What do I want to show uh, that I can actually update? I may say, you know what, I really don't want to give people the ability to update salary. So it'll be on there, but we're not going to have the ability to update it. I'll have the ability to update everything else, but not salary. What page do I want to put it on? What do I want to give the page name? Uh, do I want to use a template? There's all these different templates, and we'll have videos that are available uh, that show the different templates that are out there. But for now, I'll just keep it with uh, reports region. 
Uh, I can have these different standard templates here, fixed column headers, horizontal borders. I'll just leave it standard. And you know what? I want to add a breadcrumb to the page. Oh, I got to specify my breadcrumb region. So, uh, actually, I can't do that for this one. So, I'm going to say page one will be my breadcrumb region. Ah, page specified already has a breadcrumb region. So, you know what? Let's just take breadcrumbs away from that guy. Cancel button, submit button. I can change any of these around, you know, instead of saying delete, I'll just change that to remove. I'm not sure why you would ever want to do that, but, you know, we'll just do that to show the capabilities of, of what you can do here. So, here's my summary screen that I was talking about before. Okay, this is what I'm going to create a form and page on. So, if that looks okay, I click on finish and say, okay, I want to run the page. What does it look like? There we go. There's my tabular form. I have all these different pieces of information in here. I can go in. You can see how salary, I can't update that guy because I uh, made that a non-updatable column inside uh, this particular form. But I can update anything else, right? I can say, you know what, uh, Ward, the salesman, I'm going to change his commission. He's been doing a real good job. I'm going to bump him up to 600. I have to highlight that row to say, okay, I just made a change to that. I can say submit. Oracle should come back in a second here saying that they updated that row. You can see that it has come back now. It says one row updated to make sure that really did happen. Let's go into uh, my SQL developer, look on my employee table, and look at the data, query the data, and we'll find Smith. And you can see that he is updated to uh, 800 uh, or uh, part of his salary. Actually, who did I update there? I actually updated Ward. I changed Ward and I changed his commission to 600. And sure enough, there's Ward. He's 600. So let's go to Martin and I'm going to bump him down. I don't like the work he's been doing lately. So I, uh, I select him. I say, okay, I'm going to update him. So Ward, Martin should have been. Uh, downgraded to 1200. So if I go back here, I requery the data. There's Ward. He's been bumped down to 1200. Actually, it was Martin. Sorry, Martin was bumped down to 1200. So there's Martin. He's been down, bumped down to 1200. So you can see that it's a pretty easy way of creating forms. Now, is this obviously a production quality form? No, you'd have to go in there and change a lot of this stuff around to make it look like it's a production quality. But I also have the ability to go in and insert records, right? So I want to add a row. You can see that I now have a row here at the bottom. I'll call this guy Williams. He's also a salesman. His manager is that guy. We'll give him today as a starting date. Give him 100 as a commission, and sales is part of 30. So I go in there and I say submit. Zero rows updated, one row inserted. So now I have a new row in there for Williams. If I go into this and I requery. I sort by hire date. There's Williams, my salesman. Here's his commission of 100, department of 30. So it's all in there. So now I decide, you know what, this whole form that I've created, nothing what I want. This is absolutely horrible. I completely made a mistake. Well, how easy is it to get rid of stuff? I can say edit page one. Here's the report and the tabular form that I just created. I click on that. I can go in here, I can change a whole bunch of stuff around. I can change the query. I can set different attributes, different header and footer. I can set a whole bunch of different conditions on whether this form is displayed or not. But you know what? Just completely mistake. I just want to delete them. Are you sure you want to delete them? Do I want to delete all the corresponding buttons? Yep. Delete the region. It's all gone. Now I want to go back and say, you know what, I really wanted a master detail form. I didn't want uh, just a form of salesman. I want a master detail between my departments and sales. That's what I was really looking for. So let's go in and create a master detail. I go in there, I say create, I want to create a form. 
and this time I want to create a master detail form. So what's going to be my master table? Well, I'm going to display the department. That's going to be my master table there. Have all my columns. Looks good. Uh, what's the table that's going to be part of my detail page? I want that to be my employees. And I'll leave all of that information there. It's going to ask me again, do I have primary keys on these guys? Yep. My department is based on depno. My employees based on employee no. Do I want to use an existing sequence to populate that information? I absolutely do. So I have this one called department sequence. So populate the department. So I'm going to use employee number to populate my employee table. Do I want to include master, no uh, master row navigation? Absolutely. I'm going to have department number as my navigation order. Yep. Do I want to have them on one page or do I want to have it on separate pages? I want to have them all on one page. So here's all the information. It's going to say, okay, does this look right to you? Is this everything that you want? Do I want to create a breadcrumb entry? Okay, this all looks good. Do I want to use tabs? No, nah, I don't want to use tabs for this because it's all going to be on the same page. So here's my summary screen. Everything looks good. Let's run the page. So now, here's my departments, queries it for me automatically. As soon as I click on one of these guys, look at that. Populates everything that goes along with the department page, right? Here's all my employee details that are associated with that particular department. Very cool. Click on cancel, I go back to my main page. Everybody who's in research, there's all my research people. Here's all my sales people. You can see there's the Williams guy that I just added a little while ago. He shows up in sales. And again, if I go back to um, my employee table, you can see that I don't have anybody who's in department 40. There's nobody in my employee table. Everybody is 10, 20, or 30. So when I go back here, I say cancel. And I really want to look at operations in Boston, which is 40. No data found. So you can see how easy it is to create really sophisticated type forms and reports inside of Oracle Application Express. I basically didn't write any code whatsoever, and I was able to create these different forms where I could look at an individual row, uh, a whole bunch of rows that are part of a table, master detail form. Again, are these are these uh, production quality forms? Absolutely not. You'd have to go in there and add a whole bunch more information and make it look uh, really professional before you could turn these over to end users. But in an incredibly short period of time without writing any code whatsoever, I was able to create these really sophisticated web-based forms that query my Oracle application database.